Hello, my crystal vibing friend, and thank you so much for joining me in today's video. I am so excited to share with you my new favorite crystal. And for the record, my favorite crystal changes day by day, sometimes hour by hour. My go-to number one is always, has been since the time I discovered it, probably will be forever in Moldavite and I've made countless videos, maybe not countless, maybe like five videos <laughs> about Moldavite's energy, the transformational power, the extraterrestrial activations that come from it, and the unbelievable synchronicities it inspires in those who connect with it. Sometimes I find I get so hyper-focused on Moldavite that I forget to pay attention to the other mineralogical wonders available to us as light workers. And as of late, I've actually found myself extremely drawn to another very powerful crystal. I don't like to compare gemstones or to compare crystals. I feel like each one has a specific purpose in our spiritual toolbox. And for that reason, I shouldn't even say this is my new favorite. I can say it's a new addition to the crystal pouch that I like to wear when I meditate, when I channel, when I do my tarot readings or stream of consciousness drawings. It's become a little bit too heavy for everyday wear, but I do keep it hanging on my bedside when I sleep for divine dreams. And like I said, I like to wear it during spiritual work. So without further ado, what is the newest addition to my little crystal pouch? It's this beautiful, if not at first glance, humble crystal that is called in the trade world, Super Seven Quartz. You may have also heard of this referred to as Melody Stone. Now it's a crystal that I first heard about and first held years ago, over a decade ago, when I was first embarking on my crystal journey. And yet at that point in time, I didn't really feel drawn to own any. Interestingly, I felt this unbelievable urge to get some Melody Stone, get some Super 7 for my personal collection a couple of months ago. And in the time since, I really feel that it's not just me. I think maybe there is a collective calling or something of an activation happening in those of us who feel drawn to an elevated path, a path of seeking enlightenment, of seeking unity consciousness, of reawakening to the truth of all of our oneness. Because I've had a few of my regular crystal customers in my Etsy shop reach out to me in private messages asking about Super 7. The day that I listed one Super 7 piece in the shop, one of my regulars sent me a message saying that for the first time in a year, she put on a bracelet of Super 7 and was wondering, gee, why do I feel like now is the time to start wearing this again? And then later that day, another of my regular customers sent me a message saying that he's read all about Super 7, he's done the Googling, he's done the research, but he requested that I make a video about the gemstone properties because he felt like there might be something more to get out of hearing me talk about my crystal experiences. So it's a synchronicity, my friend, because I feel like it's been on the back burner of my to-do list for a while now to start sharing crystal stories on YouTube once again. I feel like my inspiration to do videos kind of ebbs and flows, but now is the time. So here we are. Thank you to everyone who asked me about Super 7. I've given two examples. There have been a few others. But yeah, it is something that I feel might be calling all of us. So that's the piece. I keep in my personal pouch. I've also got some really incredible pieces that I've listed in my Etsy shop. I was tempted to hoard all of them, but I think it's good to share. Later in the video, if my editing skills permit, I'll show you what these babies look like close up because they are all 
in hydro super sevens, which means they have active, visible, moving little water bubbles trapped inside, which adds a whole other dimension of sacredness. Um, but for now, I'd rather talk a little bit about what Super 7 is, why it's called Super 7, what unique properties the seven individual minerals making up this divine crystal bring to the table, why this is important for those of us on a divine mission, and how to use Super 7 in our day-to-day -day life to enhance our experiences down here in this third dimensional plane of planet Earth. Hopefully I'll be able to do that in a reasonable amount of time. And so as you can see, I'm setting aside one of my favorite go-to references for stones called the Book of Stones. And oof, I'm picking up the heaviest book in my book collection and one of my prized books. It's the Love is in the Earth Crystal Encyclopedia by Melody. And guys, I'm not acting when I say oof, lifting this thing. I don't know how many kilos it weighs, but it is a heavy book. So the reason I'm consulting with Melody's book is that it's not mentioned in the Book of Stones. And I feel that you know, this is kind of a little side tangent. In the crystal healing world, I've kind of noticed the authors tend to fill their books with the gems they have access to in their personal minds. And for that reason, you'll hear all about gems like Azeztelite in the Book of Stones because the authors have access to Azeztelite mines, and you'll hear about Super 7 and Melody's books because she has access to the mine where it comes from. And I've also noticed sometimes there's a bit of a rift in the crystal healing community where people are kind of feeling like they have to be loyal to one author or another. And while I don't mean to say that I'm not a loyal person, because I think I am, I love to explore the kingdom of minerals from every angle. So I'm not really partial to one crystal healing path over another when it comes to books. I like to read all of them. I like to absorb all the information. I like to take it as a baseline, but then meditate with the gems myself to come to my own conclusions. And so, yeah, I, I have looked up the seven different minerals making up Super 7 in the Book of Stones, but I'd also like to turn to Melody's work to describe what those seven minerals bring when they're all combined. Now, before you think I have some kind of superhuman memory, I did write down a list of the seven minerals making up Super 7. They are the minerals that give this beauty its name, and those are amethyst, smoky quartz, clear quartz, lipidocrosite, rutile, cacoxinite, and goethite. So you might be wondering what all these seven crystals are used for if you're new to crystal healing. So in brief, amethyst, the vibrant purple that you see in this crystal combination, amethyst is a gem of the crown chakra, also called the sahasrara in Sanskrit. It's located kind of at the top of the head. Imagine if you put a crown on yourself, everything that would be encircled by that crown. That area makes up the crown chakra. And in sacred Vedic texts, this is depicted as a thousand petaled lotus opening up to the universe above. It's our center for channeling. So when you pray, when you meditate, when you manifest, when you're trying to send out a beacon to existence to put your thoughts out there into the ether, they are transmitted from the crown chakra. That's kind of where you send out that beacon of light. It's also the receptive center that receives the answer to those prayers, that receives blessings. If you're a channeler, this is the center from which higher guidance can pour ideas into you. It's a beautiful two-way stream of divine wisdom. When the crown chakra is open, we have not only worldly inspiration, so not only ideas from the material realm, but also divine inspiration. We're able to get on a sacred path, serve the whole, serve the community, surrender to love and light without the fear of losing individuality. It's a very sacred center. 
smoky quartz, on the other hand, which you can see as kind of the brownish specks within the stone, is a very earth element grounding crystal. So while amethyst activates the crown located at the top of the head, smoky quartz activates the root chakra, which is located at the base of the spine. If you're sitting in meditation with your back straight and your legs crossed, the root chakra encompasses the part of your body from the base of the spine in contact with the ground. And it's called the root because this is what anchors us to the physical reality in which we live. Great ways to activate the root chakra include going for a walk, putting your feet in the bare ground, visualizing roots literally growing through your root chakra down into the earth. And the reason it's important to stay grounded, a lot of people, I think, myself included, when I started this journey, we feel like the spiritual thing is to live in the higher chakras, to try to escape up there through the crown, go into the universe, be in a state of constant awe and inspiration. And while that's wonderful, while that's a joyful way to be, it does present some practical problems in our day-to-day -day life. Unless you're born super wealthy and you've inherited a fortune that you can live on forever, which I haven't and you probably haven't either, there are necessities in life such as paying bills, paying rent, paying car payments, paying for insurance, eating, clothing yourself. And all of those things require a certain level of presence and practicality in this 3D realm. So while we realize as light workers and as star seeds that society is just a bunch of agreed upon concepts that don't necessarily have a basis in higher reality, we can understand that intellectually while playing along physically in order to provide for our material needs. And the more grounded we are, the more active our root chakra is, the healthier, the more energetic, and the more vital we're going to be while pursuing the activation of our day-to-day -day necessities. So while exercising, while eating healthy, while going to work, doing our job, maybe pursuing our hobbies, maybe starting a business, doing whatever it might be in the physical realm. And so working with something like smoky quartz helps us do what needs to be done in order to live productive lives where we're not only contributing to the world around us, but also we're not feeling overwhelmed or annoyed by the need to do what we need to do. So if somebody is constantly focusing on the higher chakras, higher chakras, higher chakras, but neglecting the lower chakras, life can become a bit depressing because it's so enjoyable to be in those higher realms that when something comes up, like we have to do paperwork or we have to do a job, we have to clean our apartment, we have to go for some exercise, go to the gym, we might resent the need to do those things and feel kind of like our human bodies are a prison for our consciousness because we're neglecting the discovery of how enjoyable it can be to play along with this game. An analogy would be, you're playing a video game, shit's going down, your character is suffering, maybe you've gotten beaten by whatever enemy is in that video game. Why do you keep playing if your character is suffering? Why do you keep playing if things are not going according to your plan? Why do you keep trying to win, trying to hit that finish line, trying to see where the story goes if it's not going well for you? because you know it's just a game. And innately, your happiness in life will be a constant whether your video game character wins or loses on that particular day. The same way when we activate our root chakra, we understand that our higher identity, our spiritual self has chosen to interact in this video game called life. And that enables us to go through the motions of doing what we have to do, being good humans, fitting in with society. If all of this sounds, pardon me, I dropped my book. 
if all of this sounds like something you'd like to learn more about, I do recommend ET 101. You might just be a star seed. It might just be good for you to brush up on that instruction manual. But in any case, grounding is as important as elevating when it comes to fulfilling our missions down here. We did not incarnate in human bodies on planet Earth to grumble, complain, resent the systems, feel like we're bound, feel like we're held back, go into meditative escapism and wait for death. We didn't do that. That would not be anchoring greater light into this planetary realm. That would be kind of like going on a vacation and then complaining about the food in the country you're visiting because it's not what you're used to. Earth might not be what your soul is used to. And so grounding helps you get along down here so that instead of just being that complaining starseed who's come into a human life only to resent humanity and not really contribute anything, instead of that, you're going to be a light in the world, somebody who others can rely on, kind of like a pillar. So smoky quartz, very, very important, especially if you are a person who seeks elevation more so than practicality. It's great to have a balance of the two. So clear quartz, which I think you can easily figure out which parts of this crystal are the clear quartz. That would be the clear parts. Clear quartz is an amplifier of energy. So while amethyst is for the crown, smoky quartz is for the root, clear quartz is for all of the chakras. It brings clarity, it helps us understand our purpose, it helps us connect with our higher goals, and it can be programmed with our manifestation desires. So how do you program a crystal? Very simply by holding it, either holding it to your heart, holding it to your third eye, or holding it in front of your mouth, and speaking out loud what it is that you seek to achieve what you seek to do, what you hope to gain, what steps you hope to take to reach the aspiration for which you've set your intentions. So this is a very personal thing, very uniquely individual thing. So I don't want to give any examples, but for those who like examples, I will anyway. So for a personal example, I would like to do more of my art. I used to do a lot of abstract drawing, abstract painting. I would constantly carry a sketchbook with me and I've kind of gotten sidetracked into more practical things that pay the rent, like making jewelry for my Etsy shop, making journals for my other Etsy shop. And while these are beautiful monetized art forms, I love making jewelry, don't get me wrong, I'm very grateful to make a living doing what I love, I have realized that I do spend a disproportionate amount of time on my shops compared to on my art. So yesterday I set a strong intention that I'm going to start making art for myself more often instead of just the stuff I put online and the stuff that I share. And so if I were charging a clear quartz with my intention, I might speak into that crystal. I'm going to make art more frequently. I'm going to re-immerse myself in the process of automatic drawing. I'm going to enjoy my artistic creative flow. And that crystal then becomes a solidified talisman for that thing I've decided to do. You can also program your crystal with your favorite mantra, with the name of your chosen deity or angel or spirit guide as a little beacon of a reminder that that divine individual is there for you. It's kind of like calling down their energy into a crystalline form. You can also speak out loud your goals financially and say, I am going to have the resources to, and then what do you want to do? The resources to travel. There's another of my intentions. The resources to pay a mortgage, the resources to pay for tuition, whatever it might be. And then that crystal becomes your talisman for your individual goal. When you reach that goal or when your intentions shift, 
All you have to do is cleanse your crystal, which you can do by passing it through Palo Santo smoke or incense or holding it under running water or leaving it outside under the bright daytime sun to be cleansed by solar rays, leaving it outside on the night of the full moon to be cleansed by the more mystic lunar rays, burying it in the ground for a little while. There's lots of ways to cleanse a crystal is what I'm saying here. And so amethyst crown chakra, smoky quartz root chakra, clear quartz, clarity and personal intention. Next on our list is lipidocrosite. And this is a very powerful crystal for self-healing of the emotional body. It helps us release destructive patterns. So if you ever find yourself engaging in self-criticism or negative self-talk, scolding yourself like, why haven't I achieved this yet? By this age, I thought that I would have a successful business by now or own my own house by now or be married by now. If you're holding on to any socially imposed external programming that tells you that you're falling short of an arbitrary deadline, that is self-criticism. And counterintuitively, we sometimes think if we worry about the things we want to achieve, that's going to compel us to achieve them. The opposite is true because when we focus on the negatives, the things that we don't have, it's like putting a mantra out there to the multiverse. I don't have this. I don't have this. I don't have this. And because the universe fulfills what we believe about ourselves, it will say, okay, keep not having it. And so we inadvertently manifest more of what we don't want. Working with lipidocrosite, which is a stone for releasing negative patterns, it helps us break that pattern of self-judgment, self-criticism, dwelling on what we don't have. It's kind of like clearing the slate so that we can put down the formula for what we actually do want. If you regularly feel ashamed of yourself, if you criticize your voice, if you're one of those people, and I used to be one of these people, for the record, who hears your voice out loud in a recording, and you think, oh, I hate the sound of my own voice, that is going to hold you back from doing something like what I'm doing now, from doing a YouTube video. That was a negative pattern that I had to surrender to existence before I was able to do stuff like this. If you criticize yourself because your body type doesn't fit the social standard of beauty, if you criticize yourself because you haven't earned what you consider to be enough money yet, if you ever criticize yourself at all, you are allowing negativity to work through you against you. It's like channeling something dark. And I'm not saying this to be a fear monger. I'm not saying like you're possessed or anything ridiculous like that. What I'm saying is your thoughts about you manifest your identity. So who do you want to be? Do you want to be the worst version of yourself that you think about, that you criticize, that you dwell on, that you resent, that you fear you're going to be stuck in? Do you ever catch yourself thinking, I would love to fill in the blank here, but I don't think I'll ever be able to fill in the blank here. If you feel like there's something that you want to be, want to do, want to experience, but because you haven't experienced it yet, you fear that it will be impossible to ever experience it in the future. Again, you are manifesting your own limitations. And so really, I love lipidocrosite. I'm gonna see. So that would be the darker flex that we see. I'm sorry, the video isn't really picking it up much, but I'll try to put still shots of all of these at the end so that you can see what these minerals look like individually. But working with lipidocrosite will help you rewrite your inner thinking process so that instead of being your own critic, you become your own cheerleader. Shift the thought from, I am on my way to doing what I want to do, as opposed to, I might never be able to. Shift that inner thinking from, 
ugh, I can't stand the sound of my own voice to this is the voice existence has given me to express myself on this third dimensional reality and therefore I'm grateful for it. Shift anything that you're criticizing about yourself to a positive and suddenly the universe is going to be fulfilling that new positive self-image with more and more positivity. Have you ever noticed when you become aware of repeat numbers, you start seeing them everywhere. When you first hear about the 1111 portal, suddenly every day you look at the clock at 1111, the car in front of you in traffic has 111 on the license plate. You receive some kind of like junk mail and the return address has 1111 in it or your tracking number for an online order has 1111 in it. It's like, as soon as you become aware of these repeat numbers, they're everywhere. That's because we inherently see the proof of whatever it is that we believe in at any given time. And so if you have a self-critical image of yourself, every time somebody gives a harsh criticism on social media, that's the first thing you'll see. Every time a stranger on the street gives you a dirty look, that will set the tone for your day. Every time you fall short of a goal that you're striving for, or some piece of clothing doesn't fit properly anymore, or whatever negative thing might happen happens, that will be taken as proof or proof of this negative self-judgment. But when we release those negative patterns, those self-critical patterns, and we embrace positive self-talk, suddenly the world is going to be showing us the signs and synchronicities to confirm your greatness. When you decide that you love your voice, you love your expression, you love what you have to say, you love your writing ability, you love your creativity, whatever it might be, rather than noticing the one or two insults that come up. When you make a post, your attention is going to go straight to the compliments, the kind words, the gratitude people offer for what you're putting out there. Suddenly people are going to be telling you, hey, I love the way your voice sounds. And it's going to make you think, how did I ever not also love this? It's a good thing about me. And so you're going to shift from that negative self-talk to positive self-talk. And the more you become aware of your positive traits and positive qualities, and I'm not saying be delusional and be happy and excited about the things that you haven't gotten yet that you want. It's more like be divinely hopeful and trust that just because you haven't received something yet doesn't mean that blessing is blocked for you. It just means you are on the path to receiving it. So rather than say, I never achieved this goal, just say, I am well on my way to achieving this goal. Lepidocrosite, powerful talisman to help you do that. Next on our list is rutile. Rutile is a beautiful golden mineral that some people describe as looking like angel hair trapped within a gemstone. You can see it readily Let's see, it's more visible in some of these pieces than others. In some of them, it's so far deep into the stone that it's hard to point out specifically. But there are like strands of gold. You can kind of see it at the bottom of this one here. No, I am going to have to just put these up at the end of the video. It's, there's a lot of it in this one, but I don't think my camera's picking it up. In any case, it's a beautiful, metallic, golden, fine-stranded mineral that activates the solar plexus chakra. So the solar plexus is our inner center of divine will, of manifestation, of willpower, leadership capacity, divine masculine energy. It's like the go-getter chakra. So while the root is kind of about health, physicality, doing what needs to be done, following the rules and the regulations of this third dimensional plane in order to be successful. 
the solar plexus takes us to a higher level of doing what needs to be done, where it's more about achieving your personal agenda. So not just doing what you have to do to be well and healthy and alive and living, but doing what you want to do. So the root chakra is like a builder. The solar plexus chakra is like an architect. How do you design the reality that you want? How do you go about manifesting? In Sanskrit, the solar plexus is called Manipuraka Chakra, and that translates to meaning the city of jewels. And it's basically seen as your own personal inner kingdom. If you could have the most luxurious palace where the stonework is made out of the most gorgeous sparkling crystal inlaid with fine gems, all the fixtures are pure gold, pure silver, pure platinum, everything is just of the highest vibrational crystalline material, you already have it inside of you. And when you activate the solar plexus, you connect not only with the sun, but with the shining force that gives the brightness to the sun with what some people call the galactic central sun or the great central sun. You connect with that within yourself. And so the ideas that you get through your crown chakra, you can actually manifest and bring into reality through that solar plexus. And so really powerfully, when you work with rutile, and rutile by itself is a very soft mineral, it's very breakable, very fragile, so it's best to work with it in the form of rutilated quartz or another rutilated crystal, like rutilated Super 7. <laughs> Working with it in the form of another crystal, holding it as a talisman, helps you tap in to your own inner power source. It's the chakra of leadership. The solar plexus is the chakra of your own right to rule over and govern your own reality, to choose your own identity, to proudly be who you are, unencumbered by other people's opinions of who you should be. Cacoxinite, the next on our list, has a very similar divining quality to rutile. It helps us activate our ambition, achieve our goals, achieve financial success, and especially break through the barrier of feeling like there's a lack in our resources. If you're one of my regular viewers, you've probably heard me say in many, many videos, especially when I do my tarot reading videos, that my favorite definition of abundance comes from the channeled entity Bashar, who defines abundance as the ability to do what you need to do when you need to do it. And when we connect with beautiful crystal allies like cacoxinite and rutile, we realize that our abundance is not our bank balance. Our abundance is our creativity our self-drive, our willpower, our determination to succeed, our confidence, all the powerful qualities that we manifest in ourselves when we decide to throw away the criticism of self and embrace the gratitude for self. Because when you are grateful to be you, all the beautiful uniqueness that the universe is channeling through you and only you, because we each have a completely unique energy that we bring into this world. There are no two identical humans. Each of us has a unique purpose. Each of us has a unique divine connection, unique things that inspire us, unique creative talents that come through us. When we're connected to the solar plexus, city of jewels, belief in ourselves, we become a more pure channel for our higher identity, for our higher will. Instead of having this disparity in our two identities, where outwardly we act like we fit in because we feel like that's what we have to do to survive down here, and yet inwardly we feel this higher calling or this higher purpose that we're just afraid to speak about out loud 
we suddenly feel a deeper integrity. So your outer self and your inner self merge and suddenly you're not censoring your expression. You're not holding back on what you really feel drives and inspires you in life really powerful. I think it's wonderful that Super 7 includes both of these amazing solar plexus activating minerals because that helps really compound that frequency. And I think where a lot of us get stuck when it comes to pursuing our spiritual calling is in the acting, in the doing. I don't mean acting like an actor on stage. I mean acting as in doing the thing. So if abundance is the ability to do what we need to do when we need to do it, poverty is the refusal to do what we need to do when we need to do it, or the fear of doing what we need to do when we need to do it, or the reluctance to do what we need to do when we need to do it. So what's the difference between wealth consciousness, wealth mentality, and poverty consciousness, poverty mentality, nothing but the blockage that stops us from seeking and pursuing our goals. The blockage that you might go to a concert and you hear the band on the stage and you think they're amazing, I love this, I wish I could perform, I wish, you know, maybe you played a guitar really well and you'd love to jump up there and jam, but something stops you. That something is the poverty mentality. That something is the blockage in the solar plexus chakra. That something is anti-ambition, the opposite of this go-getter mentality that enables you to pursue your higher purpose, your higher drive. And so there's nothing in Bashar's definition of abundance that says inherited wealth or a 401k or a college fund prepared lovingly by your parents worth thousands of dollars. It's not about your material riches. It's about your spiritual riches. How much are you ready to put yourself out there? Are you ready to go around to galleries showing your work? Are you ready to film yourself and put it online and see who might be watching? Are you ready to join a group? Are you ready to engage with others who might have shared visions? Are you ready to open an online shop and share your creativity with others? Are you able to do what you need to do when you need to do it? If the answer is yes, you've got an open active solar plexus. If the answer is, well, I know I will one day, but I'm not ready yet. Keep focusing that energy on the solar plexus. Visualize golden light flooding your navel center, pouring outward. That golden light connects straight to the central sun. That's the light that's needed to flush out any blockages or any toxins holding you back from your divine life purpose, from doing what you need to do when you need to do it. Last but certainly not least, last but maybe first and foremost in my humble opinion is goethite. Now goethite is believed by the crystal healing community of which I am a member to connect us to the sacred Akashic records, which is another word for all the divine information ever recorded, ever happened, ever will happen, in existence. When people channel and they know something without knowing how they know it, they are tapped into the Akashic records. When you go to a reader who's reading your chart or your cards or gazing into a crystal and wisdom is flowing through them and they are speaking to exactly what you've been wondering even though you didn't even voice your question out loud, they are in the Akashic record flow. Tuning into the Akashic Records is another way of saying opening your psychic channels, opening to the divine wisdom, activating your clairvoyance if this information comes to you in the form of visions, your clairaudience if it comes to you in the form of hearing sacred messages, clairsentience if you feel things, if you can touch an object and suddenly get a sense of its history, or if you enter a space that has a high frequency energy and you feel those pulsations in your chakras. Claircognizance 
which is the stream I personally feel tapped into when I do readings, which is just simply knowing something. The way you'll know something if you've studied a book and you've memorized what's in it, it's like you've learned that information and therefore it's accessible to you. When you have claircognizance, you know things just as strongly as if you read about them, studied them, experienced them yourself. Even if you didn't personally read about them, study them, or experience them, because you are opening to the state of oneness that allows you to not identify as a soul separate entity from other people, from animals, from those in the higher dimensions, from extraterrestrials, from the plant kingdom, from the mineral kingdom, from the past and from the future. When you can truly dissolve the limitations of rigid identity and understand that your body, your name, your history, your genetic line, all the things that make the human form of you what it is, all of those have to do with your human self, but that there is a greater you that is expressing through that human self that essentially your soul is not inside your body, but your body is inside your soul and your soul is connected to everythingness, that we are all avatars of everything. When you can tap into that, feel it, not just think it, not just hear it, but feel it, you are tuning into the Akashic Record. That's when the claircognizance will happen. That's why, it, that's when you'll say something and the person you're talking to will say, I was just thinking that. Like, how are you, how did you say that? Did you read my mind? You didn't read their mind, but you experienced a moment of oneness with them. And their thought became your thought. Kind of like the Vulcan mind trick, if you're, if you've ever watched Star Trek, when a Vulcan can put their hands on somebody and say, my mind to your mind, my thoughts to your thoughts, only it's not invasive. You don't have to physically activate it. It just happens. And it's not only with individuals, it's also with existence itself. You can tap into the collective memory of the planet. Anyhow, when we work with Goethite to access the Akashic Records, to realize that oneness, to dissolve our limited identity, and to channel divine information from the higher frequencies, from the higher spaces, from the higher energies with whom we are working here in this life, the greatest bliss will flow. We sometimes feel like we're not seen, we're misunderstood, we don't know our place in the world, we might not have found our so-called tribe or the community that we yearn for, the feeling of separation and limitation really beautifully dissolves when we access the Akashic Record, when we realize our oneness with all that is. Because it's not an external community that we're striving for, it's the internal validation that comes when we understand other people's approval is not needed in order to know that we are the best we can possibly be that we are here to bring light into this plane and that we're doing it. And so whether recognized or not, validated or not, appreciated or not, we will keep shining because that's our very nature. That's just what we are. The stars continue to shine on a cloudy day, even when we can't see them, because they are not reliant on our admiration to be. The same way a light worker will continue to radiate light even in the darkness of this worldly plane because the source of that light is not other people's accolades. It's not getting applauded on stage after a great performance. It's not getting a gold medal. It's not getting a gold star from your teacher. It's not a pat on the head from a parent saying, good job. It just is. When your approval of yourself becomes the most important factor in your life. When you've overcome those self-limiting beliefs, those self-limiting talks, that negative self-talk, and you've replaced it with the frequency of manifestation that can only come through when you understand that you are abundant, that your ability to do what you need to do when you need to do it 
is flowing and continuous and all of your goals are in the process of realization, and suddenly it's not only that you are seeking oneness with existence or seeking to tap into the Akashic record, it's also that the oneness of existence, the connection to the Akashic record is seeking you. A person who feels resentment towards life, resentment towards other people, a lack of connection to this earthly plane, might sit down and meditate and set the intention to connect with that higher energy, but there will be a blockage. It's not going to flow into that kind of an individual because by the nature of that individual's negative self-talk and self-criticism and feeling of resentment, they are manifesting proof of their belief and their belief is in their limitation. When your belief is in your expansion, in your unity with all that is, in your higher consciousness, in your divinity, when you sit to meditate and connect, that channeling state will just be. It's not going to be something that you have to work hard to get into. It's like you'll do a few breath work practices, or you'll hold your favorite crystal, or you'll assume a yogic posture. And with very minimal effort, that connection that you've been seeking, you'll discover it's also been seeking you and it will flow through you. It's a co-creative process. If you hold a pen, this is a fully functioning pen, right? It has ink in it, it's a new pen. If I hold it into the air and try to write, that ink has nothing to land on, that ink has nothing to stick to. I need to hold up a piece of paper and put the pen on that paper in order for the mark to have something to stick to, to land on. That same way existence is like the artist's brush or the artist's pen. If we are not solidified in our connection, we might be trying to connect, trying to channel, trying to catch divine wisdom, but we are not yet a surface that that divine ink can stick to. We have to be solid. We have to be grounded. We have to be present. We have to be in a divine space. And suddenly that link can happen. And pardon my analogy, it came to me just now. It could just as easily be that you are the pen. And we need to manifest a grounded vision of existence to tap into to have that paper, however you want to look at it. It's like a figure eight, right? It flows both ways. But when we activate all of these energy centers that Super 7 connects to, the crown, the root, the solar plexus, the etheric beyond all of these, the clear quartz, which activates the entire seven chakra sacred system, when we activate all of that and we tap into the sacred Akashic records, suddenly we are no longer trying to figure out our path as light workers or our path as star seeds. It just awakens in us. And so with all of that said, I think I've come to the conclusion of this part of the video. I could read what Melody has written about Super 7. In fact, maybe I'll do that just so that you can hear the description of Super 7 by Melody in case that's what you're here for. I hope that's not what you're here for. If it is, you just spent 48 minutes building up to this. But anyway, she writes, Super 7 has been used extensively in much of the same way as Fodden Quartz in the performance of telepathic transfer, attunement, or a site, and in the beginning of the journey and continuing the journey through the entire process of the gateless gate. So what is telepathic transfer? That's when you send a thought to somebody else, they can receive it. They send a thought to you, you can receive it. If two people are both holding a piece of Super 7 crystal, they can be anywhere in the world, separate from each other, but by focusing their will and holding the stone, they can open a telepathic link. That makes it a very highly desirable gem for anybody in a long distance relationship or a long distance friendship, or maybe a meditation group who like to connect on a higher plane. It's also really powerful if you want to meet somebody in a dream 
and have like a co-manifested lucid dream state if both of you put a piece of this gem under your pillow and agree to meet somewhere you will be able to access that gateless gate or that energy doorway to enter into that divine space the mineral combination from the grand formation is a flambeau mineral and is known to exhibit the phenomenon of saint elmo's fire an etheric, uh, sorry, an ethereal auric light reminiscent of the holy light which has been seen due to atmospheric electricity on church towers and treetops. It has produced electromagnetic waves providing the brilliant self-luminous quality and further assists one in seeing, which she put in quotation marks, and recognizing auras and in maintaining the connection between the physical and etheric planes. So if you've wanted to awaken your clairvoyance to see auras, to see divine energy, to see visions, this would be a great gem for awakening that third eye connection. Add that to our list of chakras, right? It provides for mental impressions denoting spiritual intellectual tr truths, allegories to assist in advancement, and images of one's position, appointment, and progress in the cosmic plane path working, in other words. The Super 7 is being used as the nucleus of universal brotherhood, again in quotation marks, I would say siblinghood, right? We can update that word a little bit, of the universal siblinghood of humanity, embracing karma causation and the potential for reincarnation, all based upon the science of theosophy. So why do we have the traits that we have? Where in our karmic past, have we drawn in the challenges we've experienced in life, the opinions of self we've experienced in life, the family we were born into, the friends that we attract. When we understand the karmic causation for our life's experiences, we can either reinforce those by continuing on that trajectory or shift them through our creative conscious solar plexus self-effort. It presents information for both individuals and for the collective, assisting one to understand and to facilitate the changing of one's thinking in order to set in motion the new laws, allowing peace, harmony, and love to guide and govern one's being. Super 7 never needs cleansing or energizing. It will not accumulate or retain negative energy or vibrations. The energy is unlimited in application, making it one of the very best attunement stones. So then she goes on to talk about the other stones you can combine with Super 7. I'll leave that up to you, my dear viewer, because I feel like I get asked a lot, is it okay to combine this gem with that stone or to wear that stone with this crystal? And I always feel like intuitively the crystals we are drawn to are the crystals that are calling us for a specific purpose. And while one person might be overwhelmed by carrying a giant piece of Moldavite and a big piece of Super 7 crystal, for me, that helps me feel more calmed down and in my element and able to do what I need to do, able to talk for 53 minutes without losing my train of thinking, for example. And so I would never tell somebody, yes, you can wear this crystal with that crystal, but don't combine it with the other crystal. I feel like each of us will know on a soul level which crystals we're meant to carry and when because those will be the crystals we want. It's very interesting, right, that everyone has unique taste. We'll have a different favorite food or favorite cookie or favorite tea or favorite color. If you had your favorite of everything, and that's all you experienced all the time and all that you vouched for. And if people came to your house because your favorite food is vegan lasagna, that's what you serve every single day for every single meal, it would be boring, your health would start to decline, you'd be missing out on some other really important nutrients because you're only eating that one meal. If you have your favorite crystal, as I do with Moldavite, if that was the only gem I ever worked with, I would be missing out on a whole plethora of other crystal energies that are super enjoyable. And so with all love and respect to Melody, I'm not going to read about which crystals combine well with it because although I trust her expertise, just as I trust Robert Simmons and Nisha Asian's expertises, expertise, 
I don't like to limit myself by focusing on what goes best with what. I prefer to just play it intuitively. In any case, if you feel that Super 7 is calling you at this point in time, I can't recommend it enough. I feel like I've gone through a very beautiful personal shift since I brought it into my home. I've been more productive when it comes to my creative hobbies, my creative passions. I feel like working with Super 7 is what inspired me to start drawing again and to get really creative with my channeled art. I also feel like I have more energy throughout the days to work on the books that I'm making. Right now, I'm in the process of making a junk journal based on the energies of Egypt, and it's been so much fun to do my research and explore that realm and put those pages together. And also, it helped break me out of the stagnancy on this YouTube channel where it's been a while since I've sat down to talk about crystals, and suddenly today I just felt drawn to do it. And so while I don't want to fall into the trap of faulty attribution, where I say, this crystal is responsible for all the good things happening in my life right now, because I know that's not the case. Like you are responsible for the good things happening in your life, but crystals can catalyze those shifts within you. It's kind of like you are the one who drives yourself from point A to point B, but the car makes it possible for you to do that driving. Similarly, when we go through crystal awakenings while holding and meditating with crystals, we are the ones experiencing those awakenings through our divine effort. But the crystals can in many ways facilitate that because they receive energy, they transmit energy, they retain energy, and they radiate energy. So I really personally love them. I feel like they're a huge part of my life's calling. And the last thing I want to say in this video before hopefully I'm able to, if not, hop over to my Instagram page and look at the in hydro posts I made there. You can see the water bubbles in those posts. Hopefully I'll show you some at the end of this. Apologies in advance if I can't. But the last thing I'll say before I try to do that is you do hear crystal elitists talk about the one and only mineralogical mine source of Super 7 being closed, being flooded, being no longer accessible. And so the Super 7s mainly on the market today are coming from other crystal deposits. And some people will say they are less energetic, less active, less real than the crystals with the same combination of divine gems that come from other places. And in my personal opinion, Mother Gaia, Bhumi Devi, as she's called in Sanskrit, this divine earth plane manifests love into the mineralogical deposits wherever they're found, wherever they're mined. If you pick up a crystal on the ground near where you live or near a place that you love, that crystal will be no less divine than a crystal picked up anywhere else. They all radiate divine energy and divine frequency. And so please don't let anybody tell you that crystals are only special if they come from specific locations. Mother Nature has poured love into all of the gems. Now the other, okay, so that was the second last, the last thing I wanna say here. Sometimes you'll look at a piece of Super 7 like this one, and it has lots of little flecks of goethite. It has a very clear amethyst delineation and very clear clear quartz, but you might not see the rutile in it. You might not see as much cacoxinite in it. Whereas this one has beautiful flames of cacoxinite and a lot more smoky quartz. So I've heard people ask, is it really Super 7 if you don't distinctly see all seven of those minerals within the individual piece you're holding? And so I meditated on this because I've also wondered that. Do all seven inclusions have to be in the stone that you have in order for it to radiate all of their properties? And the message that I received, kind of the, the claircognizant information that came to me, is that crystal holds memory. 
and that the longer a crystal is infused with an idea or a connection or a place, the more strongly it's going to hold that memory. So for example, if you put a stone on your piano and you play the piano every day, at the end of a decade, that stone is going to hold more of the vibrations of that beautiful music because it's been infused with it over a long period of time consistently than it will hold if just one day you put it there, play a song, and then remove it from the piano. So Super 7, because it's formed in a crystalline earth cavity, containing all seven of these spectacular minerals. You can take one piece away from that hole, but it has been born with the hole, infused with all seven, containing a spark of all seven. And so I feel that it definitely still radiates the properties of all seven of these minerals, even if the individual piece doesn't have all seven of those minerals because it has been charged with the qualities of all seven of the minerals. So again, if you feel like you're called to get some Super 7, head to your local crystal shops. Crystal shops deserve our support and patronage. Or if you feel drawn to support my small business, infinite gratitude if you do. I'll put the link to my Etsy shop in the video description. As a thank you for watching this entire long video, you can use the coupon code 1111 to get 11% 11 off. It's all capital letters, spell out the word 11, E-L-E-V-E-N, 1, 1, no spaces, 1111, first the word, then the number, to get 11% off. So much love to you. Thank you again for watching. Thank you for being a part of the Lightworker Starseed mission to infuse greater love and greater light into this earthly plane. I do believe our collective efforts are manifesting a higher, more beautiful harmony here on Earth. Much love for now. Bye.